Okay, so question 11, we've got this function here. It's going to turn into one that you recognize, uh, believe it or not, the shape of it. So we want to find when it's increasing or decreasing. In other words, we need to differentiate. So it looks a little bit ugly, but this whole thing here is just a constant. So we write that 2 pi, 1 over root 2 pi, and we're differentiating e to a function, so we write e and that function and then multiply by its derivative so 2 times negative half is negative 1 so that will just be negative x now we want to solve for when this equals 0 we know that this cannot be 0 this is just a constant so really the only value that would make this first derivative equal to 0 is 0 itself when x is 0 0 times anything is 0 so we've got x equals 0 is when a possible stationary point can occur. We plop 0 over here, find a number beyond 0, so positive x, so 10, that will be positive, but times a negative there, so that will be minus. And when we've got a minus value here, that's still positive, that's positive, but minus minus becomes a plus. So therefore, we have a maximum a local maximum there, so local max at the point 0 and that's going to be our y value now so anything here 0 squared is 0 to the power of 0 e to the 0 is 1 so it's going to be 1 over 2 pi, root 2 pi there. Okay moving on the next question is asking us to find any points of inflection. Let me just check. Yep, find all points of inflection. So we need to look at our second derivative and go, hmm, this is now going to be a function times a function. So we're going to use our product rule and I'm going to make the first function that one there. So it's differentiating the original one that we did again. So I can now write that down and say, well, that's root. Just copy what I had before minus a half x squared times negative x times don't forget that that's just the derivative this is the derivative of this bit here I have to times by the second function which is negative x plus we write the first function down 1 over square root 2 pi e to the minus a half x squared times the derivative of the second function which is negative 1 it looks a little bit ugly however we should be able to see oodles and oodles of common factors here. So we've got a common factor of that and we've got another common factor of that same thing there. So let's pull that out. If we pull out 1 over root 2 pi e to the minus a half x squared, what we're left with in the bracket is minus x times minus x is x squared. Take 1. Now again, this whole thing here will never equal 0, so it's up to this little section here, x squared take 1, and we can factorize x squared take 1 to be x take 1 times x plus 1, our good old friend, difference of 2 squares, so x can equal plus or minus 1. Uh, we can work out um, our sine diagram just to help us to find out when it's concave and convex. So we've got minus 1 here, we've got plus 1 here. Pick a number that's minus, more than, uh, less than minus 1, sorry, so minus 10, that'll be positive. Minus 10 squared is positive. In between 0, so that's positive. 0 squared take 1 is negative and positive again. So we've got that it's con convex, concave, and then convex again. Um, and we want to actually find our points of inflection, so therefore we will substitute our 1 back into the original. So it ends up with, we've got minus 1 and 1. If we put that back into the original equation, which was this beautiful being up there, the red one, um, we get 1 on that and minus 1, minus x, minus 1 squared is 1, so it's, 
oh, I don't know, e to the minus a half. So that would be, uh, I guess you could write that as root e times 2 pi. So I guess that could be 1 all over 2 e pi. And when it's positive 1 squared, you get the same thing. So 1 over root 2 e pi. Um, is it time to graph? It's asking again to find out when, as x is approaching infinity, what's happening to negative infinity. Uh, you can grab your calculator out if you want and graph this. This is one that I have seen before and you have as well because when we actually graph it, what you will find is we get our... Oh, that should be symmetrical. Let's give that another go. <laughs> Not very good. Um, this is our normal distribution curve and we've got our points of inflection that happen to be right there. So this point here goes there. This one here is our maximum of 0, 1 on 2 pi. So have a look at it on your graphics calculator. You just type in what we see. Uh, the function here, let's give it a dip. So they're going to go back up there. Okay, so we've typed that in and when we graph it, we see just a little bump there. So clearly we can adjust the scale. Uh, we'll, well, we could lower that to zero, except I like to see the X axis. So let's just make that one and let's make that three. Well, let's, oops, what did we do there? That was a bit silly. So we still want our X values. It was the Y values that I was meant to change there. Sorry about that. Three. And we can see that that's quite good. We can even, so shift view window. Let's make that minus five. Five. And we can even take that down to maybe 1.5. Very sensitive. And there you have it. Okay, our good old normal distribution graph. Okay, hope that made a little bit of sense to you.